Hi, hello students. How are you? I hope you are all fine and safe at home. Uh, already I have taught geography lesson two. So today we can uh, see the same geography lesson two. Um, remaining portions. Okay. Um, this uh, in this session we can learn about wind and waves. So in this lithosphere. We are going to learn about wind and waves. Okay. So already we have taught about underground water, sea waves, uh, wind, etc. So today we are going to study about this wind and waves. So what do you mean by wind? Listen. When air blows horizontal at or near the earth's surface, is called wind. You all know what do you mean by wind? Wind means when air blows horizontally at or near the earth's surface is called wind. Actually, wind will blow horizontally only, not in a vertical. So, air blows horizontally at or near the earth's surface is called wind. Okay. Next, uh, how uh, according to this wind, there are many things happen: erosional, transportational, depositional action of wind also happen. Uh, this is called as aeolian process. So, when air blows horizontally at or near the earth's surface is called wind. The erosional, transportational and depositional wind action of wind is predominant in arid regions. Arid region, what do you mean by arid? Arid means dry region. This is called as aeolian processes. Okay. Next, this erosional landforms of wind. Already we have, I have taught both everything erosional and depositional also will take place in this wind erosional landforms of wind how due to this erosion what are the, some of the erosional landforms of wind are mushroom rocks inselbergs and yardens so what are the erosional landforms of wind they are the mushroom rocks inselbergs and yardens now one by one below that we can learn now mushroom rock in science already have learned about mushroom what do you mean by mushroom in tamil we say colon isn't it next uh, on seeing this picture what do you understood the topmost uh, portion is not eroded the bottom it is eroded why it is happened do you know rocks are made up of hard and soft layers when a rock's bottom is soft, the sand laden winds blow against it and wear it down. You understand? Listen, mushroom rock. What do you mean by mushroom rock? How this rock has formed? Actually, rocks means it is made up of hard or soft layers. When a rock bottom is soft, the sand laden winds blow against it and wear it down. By the constant bearing down action of the wind, the bottom gets eroded away to form a mushroom-like structure. So, actually the bottom of this rock is soft layers. It, it has made up of soft layer. Due to soft layer, often if the air is blowing, means what will happen? The bottom layer is eroded. Then it will form like a mushroom, mushroom-like structure. This is called a mushroom. What is another name for mushroom rock? Pedestal rock. Such rocks are found near Jodhpur in Rajasthan. Okay, please listen. There is one question also. What do you mean by mushroom rock? So, listen carefully. Rocks are made up of hard and soft layers. When a rock's bottom is soft, the sand laden winds blow against it and wear it down. By the constant bearing down, constant means what? Continuously, if the air blows, means what happened? The down portion was eroded, bottom gets eroded, and it formed like a mushroom like structure. This is called a mushroom or pedestal rock. Such rocks are found near Jodhpur in Rajasthan. Next rock is the Inselberg. What do you mean by Inselberg? In German term, it means island mountain. That means it is a separate mountain. Certain hard rocks like igneous rocks are more resistant to wind action. So, Inselberg, Inselberg, it is a separate rock. 
Such isolated residual hill rising abruptly from their surroundings are termed as insulbe. What do you mean by isolated? Isolated means separated. Some uh, rock it is found separately. Okay, we can see this in Uluru or Aryan's rock where it was found in Australia. What do you mean by insulbe? It is an isolated residual hill. Okay. In German term, it means an island mountain. Okay, certain hot rocks like igneous rocks are more resistant to wind action. Such isolated residual hills rising abruptly from their surroundings are termed as insulbe. On seeing this picture itself, you can clearly understand how this rocks was formed. Next one is the yard dam. What do you mean by yard dam? What you can see in this picture, uh, it is like an irregular form, isn't it? Mostly this yard dung will form in the um, dry region, in the desert region only we can see this. Okay, in arid region certain rocks have hard and soft layers arranged vertically. How it was arranged? It was arranged vertically. When wind blow over these rocks, the soft layer get eroded, leveling irregular crescent. How it was formed? The land form is like an irregular. These are called yard dunks. Okay. Please listen. What do you mean by uh, yard dunk? In arid region, arid, arid means dry region, certain rocks have hard and soft layers arranged vertically. So, in this region, when wind blow over these rocks, the soft layer get eroded. Okay, actually hard layer will be remaining there. The soft layer get eroded, leaving irregular crescent. These are called yard dams. Okay, students. Next one, depositional landforms of wind. What are the depositional landforms of wind? Can you say? See, some of the depositional landforms are sand dunes. Brachens and losses. So listen, what are the depositional landforms of wind? Some of the depositional landforms are sand dunes, brachens and losses. So one by one we can learn about this in a detail. First one, sand dune. In Tamil we will say manal made. Okay. On seeing this picture also you can find how it is. Mostly this sand dune will, um, we can see in the desert area. Why means there are no plant or no trees or anything. When the wind blows strong, uh, the sand dunes will form. So, in desert, during sand storm, wind carry loads of sand. Along with the wind, what also carried? The sand also carried. So, when the speed of the wind decreases, huge amount of sand get deposited. Actually, from one place to another place, along with the wind, what also moving? The sand also uh, carrying by the wind. At the same time, when the speed of the wind decreases, huge amount of sand gets deposited. These mounds or hills of sands are called sand dunes. Okay, so mostly the sand dunes are you can see in the desert region. How it is formed means when the speed of the wind decreases, at that time, huge amount of sand get deposited in one particular place. So, these uh, mounds or hills or sands are called as sand dunes. Next one is that there are different types of sand dunes. Okay. Listen, uh, what are the different types of sand dunes? Brachen, transverse dunes, longitudinal dunes, losses. What are the different types of sand dunes? Listen, Brachen. Transverse dunes, longitudinal dunes and losses. Okay. About this different types of sand dunes, you are going to learn in detail. See, types of sand dunes, from this we can understand. Brach and dunes, transverse dunes. Types of sand dunes. Here we can see in this picture different types of sand dunes. What are they? Brachen dunes, transverse dunes. Brachen dunes becomes transverse dunes, linear dunes, parabolic dunes, 
and star dunes. These are the different types of sand dunes. Next one, brachan. What do you mean by brachan? Bra or isolated crescent shaped sand dunes. Isolated, uh, separated. Okay? Crescent, crescent means half moons shaped sand dunes. On, on seeing this picture itself, you can understand. Brachan or isolated crescent shaped sand dunes. They have gently slopes on the windward side and steep slopes on the leeward side. What do you mean by this? They have gently slopes on the wind. If the wind blows continuously, that's it will have the slope and uh, steep slopes. It will be the slope will be very steep on the opposite side of the wind. Wind blowing. If the wind is uh, blow means they are gentle slope on the windward side and steep slopes on the leeward side. So please listen. What do you mean by brachan? Brachan are isolated crescent shaped sand dunes. They have gentle slopes on the windward side and steep slopes on the leeward side. Okay. Next one, transverse dunes. What do you mean by transverse dunes? On seeing this picture, what do you understand? Like an irregular shape, isn't it? It is not in a correct manner. So, transverse dunes are asymmetrical in shape, not arranged properly. What do you mean by asymmetrical? Asymmetrical means it is not in a proper shape. So, what do you mean by transverse dunes? Transverse dunes are asymmetrical in shape. They are formed by alternate slow and fast winds that blow from the same direction. So, they are formed. How these transverse dunes are formed? They are formed by alternate slow and fast wind that blow from the same direction, not from different direction. The wind is blowing from the same direction. So, they are formed by alternate slow and fast wind. Did you understand? What do you want to I am saying what is transverse dunes? Transverse dunes are asymmetrical in shape. What do you mean by asymmetrical? Not in a correct manner. It is in a irregular shape. They are formed by alternate slow and fast wind that blow from the same direction. Okay. Next one is the longitudinal dunes. What is the another name for this longitudinal dunes? Seep dunes. Okay, students. Or you might be longitudinal dunes. Longitudinal means the dune, this soil is, you can find in a long narrow ridge of sand. It will be like a line, isn't it? From the picture itself, you can understand. So, this mostly we can see in the desert region only. So, longitudinal dunes is also called as sift dunes. Longitudinal dunes are long narrow ridge of sand which extend in a direction parallel to the prevailing wind. So, while the wind has blown, that, that direction itself, it will be formed like a long narrow ridge of sand. Okay, what do you mean by longitudinal dunes? Longitudinal dunes are long narrow ridge of sand. Okay which extend direction parallel to the prevailing wind. These dunes are called ships in Shahara. Also. So, mostly where, which place you can see this in Shahara desert. Next one is the loss. So, what do you mean by this loss? The term loss refers to the deposit of fine slit and porous sand over a vast region. Okay. Listen, what do you mean by loss? Loss means a fine slit and porous sand or a vast region. More places we can see this loss. Okay, extensive loss deposit are found in northern and western China, the Pampas of Argentina in Ukraine and in the Mississippi Valley of the United States. Please listen, what do you mean by loss? The term loss refers to the deposit of fine slit and porous sand. Minute sand, it will be like a 
fine sand or a coast region. So this the where you can see all this lotus means it was found in northern and western China, the bamboos of Argentina in Ukraine and in the Mississippi Valley of the United States. Okay. Next one is the wave. You all seen wave, isn't it? You all have the experience, you all seen the wave. Where you can find this wave? On the sea. How this wave is formed? What do you mean by wave? What is called wave? The up and down movement of surface water are called waves. Okay. What is called wave? The up and down movement of surface water are called waves. So, three waves are the most powerful agent of gradation and they are erosional, transportational and depositional. Process are confined to a very narrow belt along coastal area. So, why you can see these waves near the coastal area, near the seashore. Okay. Listen, wave. Wave means what? What do you mean by wave? Wave means uh, steady up and down movement of surface water are called waves. Sea waves are the most powerful agent of gradation and they are erosional, transportational and depositional. Process are confined to a very narrow belt along coastal areas. So erosional landforms of waves, depositional landforms of waves we are going to study. What are the, how this, uh, the help of erosional landforms of waves, what are this? We can say that some of the erosional landforms of sea waves are sea cliff, sea cave, sea arm, sea stack, wave cut platform. So, what are the erosional landforms of sea waves? The erosional landforms of sea waves are sea cliff, sea cave, sea arc, sea stack, wave cut platform. So one by one about this detail we can learn. First one is the sea cliff. What do you mean by this sea cliff? On seeing this picture, what do you understood? Like a rock, isn't it? Sea cliffs are steep rock phases formed when sea waves dash against them. So, these rocks get eroded to form steep vertical walls. So, it is like a rock. The sea cliffs are steep rock phases formed when sea waves dash against them. It will be like a steep rock. Okay, what do you mean by sea cliff? Sea cliffs are steep rock phases formed when sea waves dash against them. The rock get eroded to form steep vertical walls. So, it will be like a vertical wall, wall like structure. Next one is the sea cave. So, often if the sea water was dashed this rock, prolonged wave attack on the base of the cliff erode rock material which result in the formation of caves. What do you mean by sea cave? Sea cave means often when the wave was, under, um, was dashed on this base of the cliff, it will be eroded. It was get eroded, the rock material and how, what was formed? Caves was formed. Okay. Next one is the sea arc. On seeing this picture, what you understand? It is like a arc. Arc means what? It is like a valley, isn't it? Here, when two caves approach one another, from either side of a headland and unite, they form an arc. Example, Nile Island, Andaman and Nicobar. Where you can see this sea arc? You can see in Nile Island and Andaman and Nicobar Island. So, when two caves approach one another, from either side of a headland and unite, they form an arc. Okay, students, what do you mean by sea arc? That means two caves are form either side of headland and unite and they are joined to. Next, sea stack. Uh, what do you mean by this stack? It is like a, in Tamil we will say thun. Okay. On seeing this picture, what do you understand? 
on man was old man was standing like that so how this sea stack has formed further here erosion by waves ultimately leads to the total collapse of the arc what happened at first this arc was formed isn't it that arc was it was eroded further it was uh, continuously if the waves was going it is eroded at the time what happened it will be like a pillar so the seaward portion of the headland will remain as a pillar of rock known as stack okay uh, example the old man of hoy in scotland so here you can see this this is an scotland so sea stack what do you mean by sea stack uh, that it cave was eroded the arc at first we have found this is a sea cave that it was often if the sea water was continuously dashed means what will happen it was eroded and it will be like a pillar okay known as pillar of rock known as stack further uh, so once again i am saying what do you mean by sea stack further erosion by waves ultimately lead to the total collapse of the arc the seaward portion of the headland will remain as a pillar of rock known as stack okay uh, for example we can say this is the old man of hoy in scotland next one is the wave cut platforms what do you mean by platform platforms means what it is a flat surface isn't it dumb you say nadai body okay flat surface found at the foot of sea cliff are called as wave cut flat flat platforms so mostly where you can see this wave platforms means on the uh, foot of the sea cliffs okay Uh, flat surface found at the foot of sea cliff are called as wave cut platforms so wave cut platform is also referred as wave cut benches or benches terrace on seeing this picture what you understood from uh, it, it is happening in the sea shore isn't it flat surface found at the foot of the sea cliffs are called as wave cut platform wave cut platform is also referred as wave cut benches terrace what is another name for wave cut platforms listen wave cut benches terrace okay next one uh, on seeing this picture what do you understand this is the cliff isn't it cliff area of cliff presents wave cut platform from the sea near the cliff what was formed wave cut platform next one is the depositional landforms of waves okay students please listen already we have learned about the erosional landforms of waves what are the erosional landforms of waves sea cliff sea cave sea or sea stack and wave cut platform next we are going to study about the depositional landforms of waves depositional what is the meaning of depositional or oh, at this was deposited the first sectional means padiva okay under this also three subheadings are also there so we can study about detail the positional landforms of waves in the help of waves how this deposition has happened so what are the different types of depositional landforms of waves beach bar split okay beach bar split please listen what are the different depositional landforms of waves the different de depositional landforms of waves are beach bar split so one by one we can learn about in detail what do you mean by beach you all know beach beach means what in tamil we will say kadarkare isn't it so what you can see in the beach more sand isn't it so beach what do you mean by beach sand and gravel are moved and deposited what we can see more sand and gravel by waves along the shore to form beaches this is the most dominant and constructive work of the sea so which is the most important uh, portion of the sea means it is the beach how this beach was formed means because of the waves only 
waves or continuous waves of there means what happened the sand and the gravel are moved and deposited by waves along the shore to form beaches this is the most dominant and constructive work of the sea so example we can see in chennai which is the uh, most important beach in chennai you all know the famous beach in chennai is marina beach like that in mumbai juhu beach and in odisha puri beach okay listen what do you mean by beach sand and gravel are moved and deposited by waves along the shore to form beaches this is the most dominant and constructive work of the sea so an example juhu beach along mumbai coast puri beach in odisha and marina beach in chennai okay next one is the bar on seeing this what you understand please listen on seeing the picture what you have understood bar what do you mean by bar in tamil we will say manal titt okay so a bar is an elongated deposit of sand shingle or mud found in the sea almost parallel to the shoreline you know we can see this bar along the shore along the sea shore a bar is an elongated deposit of sand shingle or mud found in the sea almost parallel to the shoreline so this bar is an elongated elongated means long isn't it? it was deposit of in this water or means sand was deposit or mud it will we can find this near the sea shore and last one is the spit what do you mean by spit it is the rigid or embankment of sediment attachment to the land on one end and terminating in open water on the other end so spit means what in tamil we will say neenda manal pit okay it was a uh, rigid or embankment of sediment rock more sediment rock also deposited here Uh, to the land on one end and terminating in open water on the other end one end it is on the sea shore and another end on the inside the sea so it will be a it is like a bank m bankment of sediment sediment rock attached to the land on one end and terminating and another end was on the water so spit are common at the mouth of estuaries so what do you mean by spit spit is a rigid or embankment of sediment attached to the land on one end and terminating in opening open water on the other end spits are common at the mouth of estuaries so estuaries means near where the uh, sea water uh, river water and the sea water was joined that place only called as uh, for example sakinar spit where you can see I mean this is in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Sorry, it is in Andhra. Okay, Andhra Pradesh. You can see this uh, spit, this type of spit that is in Kakinar Nada spit. So once again, I am saying, what do you mean by spit? Spit is a rigid or embankment of sediment attached to the land on one end and terminating in open water on the other end. Spits are common at the mouth of estuaries. Example, Kakinar Nada spit. It is in Andhra Pradesh. okay so um, already first lesson i have taught and second lesson also i have taught this both the lesson the next class i will give the exercise so please um, uh, learn well thank you students